Welcome back guys, how's everybody doing? If it's your first time here, I'm Sukra and I do videos about retro PCs, games and other related things. Last week we introduced the Pentium MMX and we ran a bunch of games in softer rendering mode. This week we're gonna complete the Pentium MMX with the 3DFX Voodoo Graphics PCI. So how much better is the first Voodoo card compared to softer rendering mode? Is it gonna blow your socks off? I don't know, let's check it out. Most of you already know the Atrian Voodoo PCI that was used in the 46 Rust Bucket. Today it's going to the Pentium MMX 166. The 46 is very limited in floating point calculations, something that's much needed for 3D graphics and as the Pentium processor can perform up to 15 times faster than the 46 in floating point calculations, it will be interesting to see what it can do with the first Voodoo card. On the last video on the channel, we ran a few 3D games in software mode to test the 3D rendering capabilities of the Pentium MMX 166. Today, we're gonna put that against the first Voodoo card and take a look at the possibilities of this retro combo of a Pentium MMX 166, a Voodoo Graphics PCI, 64 megabytes of SD RAM, and a Sound Blaster 64 if you pay close attention to the background sounds. On Half-Life, the software rendered version has deep colors and when you transfer to 3D hardware acceleration, you definitely lose some of that, but boy do you gain in graphical detail. The game feels much more pleasant to play, FPS seems a bit higher, overall movement of every character is smoother. Do I wish the game retained more of the deep colors? Yes. Would I trade that for hardware rendering? Hell no. On another downside, this is probably not the resolution you would expect with a 3D card. The game only runs at a maximum of 640x480, but we have to remember that this is the card that mostly started a 3D hardware acceleration competition and it only has 4 megs of EDO video memory. Overall, the game looks good and in this settings it offers a pleasant playability. Unreal was an extreme case. Software rendered Unreal on the Pentium MMX was sort of like a puzzle of huge pixels strapped together by the fabric of the Unreal game engine. Colors are deep, but pixels are the size of chest tiles, and you can't make out the details of the beautifully designed sceneries. The Voodoo card is what makes it possible for the designer of this game to actually show what he really wanted to. When you get outside for the first time, it's really impactful, makes you feel like you are in an open world game, even though you're not really. But the waterfall that seems simplistic today was shockingly realistic and beautiful to me when I saw it for the first time. What a jump in quality using the 3D effects card on Unreal. It really made you feel PC gaming was at the next level. Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2 is a game that actually already looks pretty good in softer mode. Like its predecessor Dark Forces, this game is very well optimized and in softer mode it can run at up to 640x400 without the need of a 3D hardware acceleration card. Nevertheless, the Voodoo makes for an overall better experience. You can see more detail and the frame rate is higher. I'm sure all of you have watched Star Wars, so you know that the Empire ships are mostly grey, so the washed out color effect that the 3D FX card has on games really doesn't affect this one a whole lot. The game was already pretty good, like in the other examples, the Voodoo makes it even better. Heretic 2 is a demanding game for this hardware. The software rendered version suffers from heavy stuttering and frame drops. Not to say the 3D accelerated version doesn't, but it did improve overall smoothness considerably. This game runs on the Quake engine with heavy modifications and it's an ambitious evolution from the original Heretic that was basically a medieval Doom clone. It's a weird game, but I like it as it implements third person fights with magical powers, puzzles and parts where you swim. It also has transmuted zombies like humans that cook other ex-humans, I don't know. It's kind of a weird game that is interesting enough that makes me enjoy it. 
For playability as usual, in 3D acceleration mode colors are a bit washed out, but using a voodoo card makes it playable at 640x480 with enough detail that you can enjoy the game with all its weird little quirks. No secret to anyone, Shogo is my favorite game from this time period. No other FPS game I had played so far offered the variety that this game did. There are missions you pilot the Big Macs, the Macs turn into a tank like a transformer, and then there are parts inside the base as a person in a sort of RPG manner. That blew my teenage mind in 1998. But back to the game, it's basically impossible to play this game in software mode. Textures are glitchy and the frame rate is low, but again, once you have the 3DFX card in, it's another game. Faster with clean textures, finally you can explore the Transformer action with quirky Japanese role playing, bad jokes and all. Like the other games, Shogo runs in 640x480, really confirming to us the ideal configuration for the Voodoo 1 card. Same side effects as in all other games, colors are a bit washed out, not as bad as in some other examples though. The biggest fail of this lot was Diablo 2. I had plans of running that, but the Voodoo 1 does not meet the minimum requirements. It doesn't have the minimum amount of 8 megabytes of video memory for textures, and the game doesn't even load. In conclusion, the Voodoo Graphics PCI makes games a lot sharper and more pleasant to the eye. Softer rendered 3D games in low resolution are kind of like a mess of pixels sort of in the right place to build a comprehensible image. So is the Voodoo 1 the ultimate graphics accelerator? No, but it was a good start. It's only got 4 megs of EDO RAM and it seems to me like it's made for 640x480. I know that Glide doesn't have an FPS counter, but I could tell it was between 20 and 30 FPS in most of the games. Anyway, I do think it's a good match for the Pentium 166 MMX. They are basically the bare minimum combo for 3D gaming, the Voodoo with its massive 4 megabytes of EDO RAM and one pixel pipeline. Well, I hope you got some useful information or at least had some fun. Click the like button if you like 3D Accelerator, dislike if you believe the earth is flat, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.